Hi Taurus, how's it going? It's your girl Nosh and this is going to be your video for the first week of May. So we're going to do April 28th, I think it's April 29th to May 5th I believe it is. Yeah, May 5th. Alright, so this is going to be your reading. Um, we have the new moon going into Taurus and first and foremost I want to say happy birthday to my Tauruses. I hope you guys are good. So May 4th, I think May 4th, May 5th, the new moon goes into Taurus, which it hits me in my 10th house. So check your charts and see where it hits you because wherever it hits you, that's where it's going to resonate the most, okay? And if you need help finding out what your chart is, um, let me know, uh, message me. You can leave me a comment at the bottom and I'll help you out as much as I can. And uh, again, also, um, just see see how it resonates with you. Normally, like for me, for example, my 10th house is about my career, um, my hands-on engagements, um, people that I meet and greet with um, that have to do with my career and my professional work. So it's kind of weird that we have the moon, new moon going into Taurus and I'm actually back on doing videos. So you see how things work out? So try it, okay? Um, so, you know, like I said, again, it, it all depends on where it lies in your house. Now it could lie in your, your ninth, your 10th, your eighth, your second, whatever, just whatever it is. You can always Google it and see, you know, whatever house it's in, you can always Google and find out like where it, you know, where it hits you and how it's going to affect you. Um, also with, um, you know, it also heavily affects you if your uh, moon is in Taurus, um, or your rising is in Taurus and your sun is in Taurus, obviously. So let's get into your reading. Uh, Spirit guides, ascending masters, universe, angels, I ask that you please protect me in light and my watchers in light as I do this reading. Please help me relay the message that they need to hear for the first week of May, which is the week of April 29th to May 5th. All right, guys, these readings are timeless. If they resonate, they resonate. If they don't, don't worry about it. You can catch another reader on here and I'm sure you'll you'll find someone that you resonate with, okay? So what is going on for Tauruses for the first week of May? What's going on with my Tauruses for the first week of May? What's going on with Tauruses for the first week of May? I just saw a Pentacles card. That's always a good card for you guys. Oh, 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 we got too many cards. Hold on. One more card on what's going on with Tauruses. There we go. All right, that came out, that came out, and that came out. All right, so you guys got the Two of Wands upside down, and you guys got the Seven of Pentacles upside down. I just have to count, sorry. And you got the Queen of Cups. All right, so these cards together, um, the story that this is telling me, the Two of Wands upside down, and the Seven of Pentacles upside down, it's, let's, we'll start with this one. The Two of Wands upside down is kind of saying that, you know what, this could go two ways. You were looking at something, you had options, and you're looking at your options, and at this point, you may not have these options anymore, or the person that you're interested in may not have options anymore, so they might be thinking about building with you, okay? So, but with this card, it's plain and simple, um, the card... Upright like this is, is a guy holding two, you know, a wand in his hand and he's holding um, another wand. He's, you know, there's another wand standing behind him um, and then, then he has the world in his hand and he's looking out. Um, this card usually represents someone who has two choices and the choices that they have are, um, you know, they're dealing with someone and they have someone else. So it could be that you have two options, right? And you're also looking out at what else is out there. But upside down, it kind of seems like, you know, I hate to say this, but it is the truth. You're kind of running out of options. Um, you're kind of thinking about what you left behind. And it's okay because, you know what, this this is called reflection, you know. If there was someone in your life that, you know, was good to you, that treated you good, you're missing that person at this point. And the reason why I say that is because this is upside down. The Seven of Pentacles upside down is kind of saying that, you know what, it was good. You liked it. You had fun. But it was too much work. Um, that's why you're kind of like, you know, you're looking at other people too because they're not fulfilling you either because you're still stuck on this one person, okay? And the fact that you're stuck on this one person, you keep thinking that, you know what, it was too much with this person. It was high maintenance. It was hard work. Um, you planted everything and you didn't see the rewards coming in that you planted for, meaning you worked really hard. Okay, like you were courting something, somebody, right? Something. I hope you're not courting something. You were courting someone, courting in terms of you were dating someone, or you had a crush on someone, or you liked someone, or you were talking to someone. There's so many different phrases we can use for this. I love it. 
But what happened is um, throughout the situation, things got tough for you or the situation got a little tough where, you know, people lose contact, people lose communication, people separate. So this is also kind of telling me that you are in separation mode with someone, okay? But you're kind of looking at this person and you're kind of thinking, wow, like, you know what? I planted all this stuff and I wanted to get all this stuff back from this person. The love I put in, I wanted to reciprocate. I wanted to have it reciprocated back to me. But unfortunately, that did not happen because the person you were focusing on, either they weren't into you or they felt that this relationship was too hard to work on. Seven of Pentacles upside down. The next card you have is the Queen of Cups. I love the Queen of Cups because this is a person that's looking at her chalice in front of her that is filled with emotion and love and worthiness, okay? This is emotions. You are starting to finally see yourself as a queen or a king if there's men watching. Um, this, isn't, this is not gender specific though, so take it as it is. Um, so you're looking at yourself as the queen of cups. You know, you're looking at yourself like, look, listen, I have all this love for myself. I have all this love around me. What is it that this person isn't, wh why is it that this person doesn't see this? And it's okay, Taurus, if this person doesn't see it because not everyone is going to see things the way you do. And this is a big thing for you because you want people to be on your side. You want people to see how nurturing and caring you are. Um, you want to go out and, and, and live the fine life with someone. Um, there's not a Taurus that I know that likes to be alone. Um, Tauruses are very generous. Um, if you make them happy and they like your company, they like being around you and they like sharing things, you know? Um, so they're very generous. Um, so this, so right now what's going on is, or in the near future, what's going to happen is um, that you're going to look at yourself and you're going to be like, you know what? I deserve better. I know I deserve better because I've worked hard at who I am. I've worked hard at to, to balance these emotions because the Queen of Cups is also a balanced indivi individual. Um, the Queen of Cups is also someone who is so full of abundant and so, uh, you know, full full with, I would say, emotions, not in the sense where she's crazy with emotions or he's crazy with emotions. It's more like emotions of love, you know? You have a lot of love to give. That's what I want to say. The only thing is you are looking at your chalice and you're seeing who should I give this love to going into the future. This could be that you're looking at the person that you left behind, that you thought that it wasn't working out with or it was too much, that... Maybe they're so worthy of this cup. Maybe they're so worthy of these emotions that I have for them. Because nine times out of ten, Taurus, you still have these emotions. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't be thinking about how much work you put into it, okay? Because usually when Tauruses are done, they're out, you know? Um, it kind of... Not so much cutthroat like an Aries, um, they're out. <laughs> I just did Aries video, I'm sorry. Or, or like a Sagittarius, like, you know, like they just move on. Once they're done with you, they're done with you. Um, Tauruses are more uh, in the sense where it takes them a while. You know, they, they like to look at, at the pros and cons of what they're losing. Sagittarius and Aries and Leos, Leos are the silent ones. They'll still love you inside silently, but they won't say anything. Sagittariuses are the ones that are like, you know what? You don't like me? We don't have anything in interest? You don't have anything in common? You know what? Whatever. It's okay. Because they're so optimistic, you know? That's why if you ever want to get back with a Sagittarius, you know, it's you could try that. Because they'll actually look at you and be like, all right, maybe this will work out again. Um, but an Aries, once they're done, they're done. Um, but if an Aries has love for you or they, or they, you know, think about you a lot or they have emotions for you, they'll come back. I don't know why I was telling you this because I have a feeling you might be dealing with a fire sign. All right, Taurus, you may be dealing with a fire sign that could be an Aries, Sag, or Leo. Because I could have picked any other signs. I don't know why I automatically went to that. Um, no, it doesn't mean because I'm a Sag son. Um, but just saying. So you're looking at a situ current situation in your life and you're looking at it like, you know what? I am worthy of love. I deserve love. And you know what? I want to give this love. But who is worthy of this love? Okay? So just to recap real quick, you guys had a situation where you had options, you know? But now you're kind of looking at it, we're like, you know what, no, these options, I don't know about this anymore. I don't know if I want to go out into the world and, and give my love because I've been hurt so bad recently. The person I was working it out with or the person that I liked didn't like me the way I like them. You know, there were just, it was just too much work. We didn't, we butted heads or we butted heads. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there was, you know, certain conflicts that were just too much for you. And as I know Tauruses, Tauruses like to just flow freely. But, going back to what I said, you have the Queen of Cups showing that, you know what, 
you are looking at the situation like, is it worth it to give it another shot? Is it worth it to go out there and put my love on the line again or to wear my heart on the sleeve? So that's what's going on with you guys this week. And it makes a lot of sense, like I said, because the new moon is going into Taurus. Well, the new moon is in Taurus. So Taurus is all about, you know, the senses, how you feel. Um, it's ruled by Venus. Um, and Venus is the sign, you know, Venus, a lot of people mistaken and think that, oh, it's the planet of love. Yes, it's the planet of love, but it's also the planet of lifestyle. I kind of feel like the lifestyle that this person had or the way they were really didn't suit you. And that's why you were kind of like, this is too much work. You know, and Tauruses, another thing about Tauruses are they're very comfortable in who they are and in their skin. So if you ask them to move or change, <laughs> that's why they call them the stubborn bulls. I wonder why. But again, Taurus, you're kind of looking at the situation where you're like, you know what? Is it worth it? You know, is it worth it to put myself out there again? And to be honest with you guys, I would say go for it. I'm a, I'm a fan of love. I'm a fan of people being in happy relationships. If this person made you happy... So what if it's hard work? They made you happy. You know, if this person was helping you spiritually grow within yourself and, and become a better person, hard work is necessary because anything that comes easy is not worth it. Hard work is always good. So if this person was challenging you, maybe they were challenging you in a good way and maybe giving your emotions to that person may work out. Um, so that's your reading, guys. Um, you guys are in between thinking about whether you want to give this person your cup of love or not. So... Let me know what happens. Um, leave some comments down below and let me know what, what you guys are going through. And again, if this resonates with you, amen. If it doesn't, um, there's a reader, I can't remember her name, but I love how she says it. If it applies, let it, uh, let it apply. If it doesn't, let it fly, okay? So please don't leave comments at the bottom. No, this is not what's going on. This is what's going on. I'm just nine times out of ten. As soon as I read it, I'm probably going to delete it. But if you have the situation that it resonates with you, please let me know what's going on, okay? Um, again, guys, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for hitting the like button, hitting the subscription button, and hitting the notification button. So this way when I post up, you guys know what's coming, okay? So that was your reading, guys, for the first week of May. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time. And again, happy birthday, guys. Take care.